Hello and welcome to our virtual rhinoplasty meetings. My name is Dr. Cameron McIntosh and I'm the president of SORSA or the Society of Rhinoplasty Surgeons of South Africa. So during the coronavirus lockdown period, we decided to have bi-weekly Zoom meetings. We specifically chose teachers from around the world to be able to cover many topics. Unfortunately, due to patient confidentiality, we can't actually show you the real talks. However, the very interesting interactive question and answer sessions is what we're going to be showing you. We want to give a shout out to our colleagues around the world fighting coronavirus. Please look after yourselves and be safe. So I'm not going to say anything more. Enjoy the show. For episode 15, Dr. Peter Palhazi gave us a brilliant lecture on nasal anatomy. Peter, that was fantastic, eh? Um, in my residency, I, I dissected 50 noses. And I'm telling you, what I saw and what you showed me here is just it's amazing. And it's, you know, what you're showing us is the foundation of rhinoplasty. And none of us should be even attempting rhinoplasty until we know our anatomy properly. Eh? So, wow, thank you for that. You, you're so humble you. in how you spoke to us. Thank you. Really. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to, to be with you here today. <laughs> However, if you have questions, if you have time, then I would be happy. Sorry, Cameron, I don't hear you at all. It's... I think, uh, Peter, I think uh, Cameron's frozen. Oh, yeah. Um, let's, just, let's just see if he comes back. Otherwise, we can, let's kick off with a couple of, uh, a couple of questions in the meantime. Um, I'm just gonna go, go down here. See, yes, Cam. She asked questions, my internet yeah. crashed. Okay, fine. Well, the meeting's just suddenly disappeared. You are nuts. Hang on. Uh, I'm, I'm still here. I could still see it. I'll look through some questions. Uh, so, from. Uh, Ali Sami, hello, Dr. Alhazi. You do not recommend at all SMAS debulking in, thin, in thick skin patients using the endonasal approach? I, 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 didn't, I didn't state anything like this. I, I think sometimes it is, it, is, uh, it is necessary. There are those cases when you have to debulk. And I, I just did, did state that if you do debulking and you go just above your classical uh, dissectional layer then you will you will reject this mass and you can go into the vessels as well that's all i wanted to say with that just to keep in mind that if someone debugs that could could be problematic as well that's all thank you and then uh, a question from dr saban dear peter i love your presentations i have a difficult question for you do you consider the piriform ligament as an extension of the embryological olfactory capsula, or is there another origin, <clears throat> like simply a joint between accessory cartilages, cartilages and piriform aperture? Just to complete my question, did you find variation cases without piriform ligament? What? What? Uh, it's a very hard question, but it's easy to answer the second part of okay. this question. I, I think that this this ligament. In, in according to my experience, it, it was always uh, easy to recognize, and it was sometimes it was weaker. But I could say that most of the time, really, really most of the time, like eighty percentage, it was something really strong. And uh, I, I, I think this this is I, I look at it as something like a remnant of this cartilaginous uh, capsule because if you if you go subperichondrial on the upper lateral cartilage, then you will actually just enter or divide uh, parallelly or longitudinally this. So you will go into this. And uh, people don't really like see it because it's bloody and it's lateral, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's something really real. Great. And then Question from uh, Dr. Barish Fakir. Uh, Peter, where the vertical where does the vertical scroll ligament make its insertion dominantly? Upper lateral cartilage, lower lateral cartilage, or inner cartilaginous plane? This is the question. What we I think we we talked about it many times because it's 
it's just hard to say it it goes uh, it's as as the histological cross sections also prove it's it's a bunch of fibrous tissue so and it goes into the scroll and to 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 say or state that it goes onto your out curling edge of the upper lat or goes to the cephalic edge of the lateral crest that's very hard to say i think it's rather it depends on how you how you preserve it and that's what you're gonna gonna see that but that's for sure that the variations in this scroll are also so so variable so it's it's <laughs> It's, it's it would be a really long 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 night if we would like to really see that <laughs> i tried to see this scroll and i tried to make them uh, some uh, to, to see the form to analyze it but it's hard to say but i would rather just say that it goes towards this scroll and not particularly to any of the cartilages sure and I'm, I'm skipping through a okay. bunch you of... Can, oh, you yes. Quest, that um, uh, Dr. Saban asked right at the start, unfortunately, I was kicked off, so I've come back on again. He asked a very interesting question. I don't know if you can scroll up to right. that. I, we, we, we just we've covered we've that. Done it, Jim. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Carry on, Amir. Carry on. Sure, sure. Uh, so I'm actually, I'm skipping through a whole bunch of people who are just complimenting how great of a lecture you gave, Dr. Paul. I, I want to come back. Ali, uh, I mean, I want to just come back to one question because there's been a lot of discussion about subperichondrial uh, sub, sub, uh, subsmas dissection in a lot of the webinars. Um, there's a, a question from Ali Sami says, uh, Dr. Pahazi, do you recommend subperichondrial or subperiosteal dissection related to thick skin patients? And perhaps could you also maybe relate the answer to um, the, 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 the quality of the periosteum, uh, I mean, the, the, the perichondrium in terms of the structural support, particularly with tip suturing? Oh, it's a very, again, it's a very nice question. Again, it's a very, I think it's what I recommend. That's, uh, that's, that's, it's, I, I tried everything, subsmas, subperichondrial, do I recommend to go subperichondrial? I, I love it because it's, it will become anatomical. The entire surgery will become less bloodless and it's really nice, but it has also its drawbacks. So, so and th those drawbacks are exactly what you just mentioned. So to, 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 to put here domal uh, creation sutures, that will be much harder. The, the cartilage is much easier to damage if it has no, uh, uh, perichondrial protection. Also, if you talk about the upper lateral cartilage, if it's really flimsy, very weak, you see that it's it's uh, not like a vault, but it's really concave and flimsy. Then, if you take off the perichondrium, it will be even worse, and you can create problems for sure. So, so it's uh, it's hard to tell if you can if you are good enough to. I'm not good enough, but I am sure that there are people who are good enough to analyze the nose preoperatively and they can say that, okay, I'm okay here. It will be strong enough if I go subperichondrial. The cartilages in the nasal tip are strong enough if I go subperichondrial. Then why not? Because it really protects everything above it. So the idea here is to protect the soft tissue with this type of dissection. Uh, and th this is a good thing, I do believe, but it has also its drawbacks. And I don't know, maybe what was your question regarding the periosteum as well, or just perichondrium? No, it's just a perichondrium. Yeah. Because I think on the on the bony vault going subperiosteal, I think I, I cannot see any disadvantage there, apart from the little perforator vessel bleedings. Uh, I cannot see any disadvantage there. Regarding the perichondrium, that's uh, yes, that's a hard question, and take all of those in consideration. Oh, Doctor Mac, uh, you're you're muted. Let me unmute you. Sorry. Uh, Here we go. There go. Yep, you're good. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> I'd just like to remind everyone to please have a look at the CME points that you can get and the little um, review we're doing.
Peter, um, I have a question for you in terms of, um, we are from South Africa, obviously, so we have a lot of African noses that we work on. How, how different have you found, would you say, are the three most important anatomical differences that you found between African or African-American noses and the Caucasian noses? Uh, Cameron, I will be honest with you. I, I dissected black, uh, black specimens only in the United States regarding facial anatomy and not the nose. So, but, uh, uh, so I just could tell you what, what, what we all know. I have no personal experience, but uh, obviously in the soft tissue, cartilage strength, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I have no personal experience, unfortunately, because of my region. I, I have experience with Caucasian noses. Cool, okay, so, no, that's great. Um, uh, Peter, there's a question. We're gonna go for another five minutes and then we'll, we'll close it down. Uh, a question here from Ali, he says, if we are doing the ballerina maneuver, what about the stability of the lateral walls? Because the height of the bones and the upper lateral cartilages are different. The, the, the lateral keystone release or, or ballerina maneuver, as Dr. Goksa calls it, uh, people call it in really different ways. Uh, so, so if you are in, in here and you, you release, that could be really problematic because this will really damage your lateral wall. And don't forget that we are just right at the, 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 the position where we have the typical internal valve collapse where it appears many times on the lateral wall. So uh, especially if you, if you not just disarticulate the, the, the cartilage from the bone, but you go down and you cut along the piriform aperture to cut through the piriform ligament as well, that's really problematic. So that's why I told you that in my mind, these maneuvers are not the first choice. This is what you do when you have to do and you are, you are sure that it will not cause functional problems because this can obviously cause functional problems in the lateral wall uh, where it's the most uh, easy to damage. So, so, but sometimes people have to do it because they would like to flatten it and they have to do this. So, yeah. Thank you. That's, okay, that's, um, that's, that's great, Peter. There's one more question here from Ali wants to know, is there any landmark for a lateral osteotomy with piezo to avoid trauma to the nasolacrimal duct with this wide degloving? Oh. I, I don't think that you can, you have to go really lateral as well. Uh, and that's what, what the landmark is, what, what I showed in my presentation. That's really where the flat maxilla becomes vertical. You, 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 will, you will not palpate, obviously, if you have, if you have a piece or you, you see it and you see where it will turn more vertical. And the other thing that you, anyway, you have to bend or your your piezo device if it's a okay let's 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 divide it into two category if you do a standard rhinoplasty then you do your uh, hump um, hump reduction and then you do the lateral osteotomy that's a totally different osteotomy from a preser dorsal preservation osteotomy if you do if you do a normal uh, medialization then you would like to cut like this let's say transversally as, as I'm sitting right now transversally because you would like that your your the frontal process of the maxilla to sit on the max on the maxilla you would like to have this while in the other case in preservation most of the time you would like to cut oh, I'm sorry it's very hard to show on myself yes like this you would like to cut in this direction because you would like to slide push everything inside and if you cut like this this will facilitate uh, the uh, the the push push uh, push down maneuver. So when you do just this, the normal standard rhinoplasty, I don't see. I, I cannot really imagine how you could do that. I, I tried many times on cadavers. You can really. I, I did it really many times. I could never reach the lacrimal duct. Uh, however, when you do it like this, in that way as well, you 
you just you are just anterior to that. So regarding the landmark, all your landmark is the the nasofacial groove. There's nothing else. And sometimes I went in, in, I tried to go really lateral, something to s simulate what you're talking about. I, I just went into the maxillary sinus. I actually opened it. It was really fun to see during uh, uh, cadaver rhinoplasty, but I could not touch the, uh, the, 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 the lacrimal duct business. So that was really rather just the maxillary sinus, but we move the maxillary sinus, we go in it and nothing happens. It's like with the frontal sinus. With piezo, you can scrape it off, you can actually check in it and then just, I mean, I don't want to bagatellize this, but but uh, that's what I think. <laughs> Great. Okay, Peter, I'm going to, the last question from the audience from Philia over in Europe is, she wants to know what is the average distance between the lateral keystone area and the piriform ligament. Oh no, they are just right to next to each other. So right. lateral keystone area is everything here, which is the overlapping uh, segment. So where the, the bony vault and then the upper lats go under it. That's the lateral keystone. That's somewhere here on myself. And then the, the piriform ligament will be where just anterior to the piriform aperture, it will connect the bone to the accessory cartilages and the lateral crust actually feels and connects all the cartilages here, where you feel that it's weak lateral wall, the mucosal space, that's the area which is overlapped uh, and covered by piriform ligament. Mucosal space is exactly the same area, the piriform ligament is the same area. Um, so it's not distance, they are just right next to each other. Okay. So Peter, um, I wanna ask you a question. When um, Dean Turiomi spoke to us, he gave us a special discount to the source members on the group. Are you and Roland gonna do the same because this is, this is amazing. Eh? So to chat to him and, and let us know, and uh, if, if we can agree on something, we'll put it out on the social media. So I want to end off with what I've now is becoming a little tradition to ask all the speakers. Peter, there are obviously guys on this group who've been doing rhinoplasty for decades. They're brilliant. There's guys who just at the start. From your perspective of where you're standing with this unique anatomical knowledge that nobody else in the world has, what would you say are the three most important takeaway messages that you would like to give the audience? Uh. I don't think that you need this deep, uh, deep knowledge of anatomy. Firstly, uh, if you would like to enjoy rhinoplasty, then you need this, I think, because I, what I see on my, on my friends that, uh, and, and on all of us, that those who are really interested, they need to see, understand the anatomy and then they can, they can modify their techniques. They can, they can, they can find new things and they can find something uh, enjoyable in the daily routine. So I think this is just, this helps you obviously with, with, with your, with your career. But, uh, if you would like to really enjoy this and to become a, somebody who will just, just discover things, then I highly recommend this. <laughs> oh, that's great. Eh? Well, well, Peter, thank you, man. I, I, I genuinely, it's, 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 it was absolutely brilliant. You did so well thank and, you. and thank you for, for helping us. I thank you for everybody who's oh, logged in. It's a pleasure. Yeah, and uh, go and rest well, Peter. We so appreciate what you've done for us as a society and the people around the world who've been watching us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And don't Good forget, night, it's everybody. not just me. It's yeah. my friends. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.